hello, welcome again. I am Laurie Rockwell, and I am here with Caden, my, my cameraman. But we are here to paint with you guys today. We are going to do a gecko. So, um, we've been having fun doing this ever since we all got told to stay home. So it's been months and months and months, it feels like. But anyways, we, um, we're going to do this gecko today. We're going to do watercolor and Sharpie. Welcome, everybody. If you're here for the first time, please say hello. Welcome to all the ones that have been painting with me all this time. I so appreciate it. This has been a lot of fun, and I know you don't always get to be on right at the moment when I'm live, but you circle back around and do it when it fits your schedule, which is awesome. So anyways, thank you guys for all that you're, you've done, all your support for me. Um, I so appreciate it. So we're going to, I'm going to jump over, let Caden sit here so we can um, do our gecko today. Are you coming, Caden? Let's see, we gotta get this. I think. Sorry, people, I'm gonna have to make this up a little higher. All right, I think we can see good here. I feel like we're too close. But maybe not. I just want to be able to see the whole picture. That looks good. And then you can kind of see Kate. Whoops. I always get my hair caught in the chandelier. Alrighty. Sheila, hi. Okay. So we are going to get started here. I have my watercolor. Um, I have my watercolor paper here. And we just use, I, I particularly like to use the mixing watercolor set. You can't just buy those in the regular store, but you can get them from art supply stores. I love this because I love mixing my own colors. It's like my favorite thing to do. And then we're using a Sharpie. So this is all we're doing today. Um, we can make this gecko in some of our paintings. Sorry, I say this big old bandage, you guys. I have poison ivy. I don't hardly ever get poison ivy. Um, but I did and it's just right here and it's driving me crazy and it looked kind of yucky So I didn't want anybody to see it and this little circle Caden says I'll just think it's a fitness wa ro watch or whatever. It is a slice of potato Which is crazy, but it does kind of pull out some of the toxins I think and makes it quit itching and, and stinging stuff. So. so anyways, I covered it up man That's like real obvious in here. Oh, well it's what it is. We will go on. Okay, so this gecko, we can make it part of a, we'll kind of, I'll show you a way we can make a little bit of a scenery in this, okay? So we're going to start, I'm going to put my gecko angled right across this part of my paper. Hi, Kenzie and JC. Welcome back. Oh, you got Gus today. Gus and Oakley. Welcome, you guys. And JC, did you have a great birthday yesterday? I hope so. So we're gonna, this will be a good one for Gus and Oakley, I'm guessing are boys. Um, but anyways, you guys will like this one. So I'm gonna make my gecko going at an angle this way. And I'm gonna leave the top half of this paper to put a little bit of a desert looking scene to it, okay? Because this gecko lives in the desert. Okay, so I wanna do his head over here. So if I put my arm kind of across the top part of my paper, I know this is where I don't wanna draw. So I'm going to start right here, and I'm going to make um, kind of a football shape for the head. But I'm not going to close it on the other side because we've got to have a neck there. Okay. Now, on the top side, I'm going to start right here at the neck, and I'm going to curve out a little bit, and then curve back in. I'm going to come down and I'm going to curve around because that's starting to tell. Okay, so now on the other side, I want to curve out and come in the body. And then I want to come around and follow this curve. And I'm going to make this gecko tail longer and it gets closer together as I get towards the end. Okay. Okay. 
So we've got our head, we got our body, and we got our tail. Now the eyes are kind of a little bit on the side, probably to give them good vision to be able to see the insects that they need to catch to eat. So I'm just going to put a black dot there and a black dot here, kind of towards the outside of the head. If you want to put a little bit of curved line around it, kind of give them some eyelids, you can. Also, I think I could put a couple little nostril lines, right? on the end of his nose. Caden is going to town over there. Caden, you're kind of off the picture. Let's see. Well, I don't want to move the camera. Let me get yeah, don't move it. up just a little bit. Just a tad. There we go. Now we can see all of what you're doing and what I'm doing. All right. Once it quits wiggling. Okay, you ready to do some legs? So we got gecko legs coming out and they're bent. So I'm gonna come off right below the neck. I'm gonna come angle down and angle back up. And then I'm going to start down again, right below this line. And I'm gonna angle down and I'm gonna angle back out. Now they've got sticky fingers and I think they have four of them. So, was it frog toes we did? I think it's kind of like that. If we come out, make a line out on each side, and we're going to make a W. Let's see, three Vs. So a W and a B or three Vs. One, two, three. And then we can make the little circle sticky toes on the end of that. Okay, let me do that again. That was a little scrunched together. I was trying to think, get the right amount of toes. All right, so on the other side, I'm coming out, making the angle down, and then the angle up. And then I'm going to make the second line. Okay, so I'm going to come straight out further on each side. So I do a line left and a line right. And then I want to put three V's in the middle of that. And then I can add my sticky toes onto each of those. Does that make sense better? I think that helped a little bit as long as I got those spread out a little bit further. All right, so his back legs are going to be a little different Thank you, Gail. A little different um, shape than the arms because just the way they bend are a little different. So now I'm going to angle up and down really close, okay? And then his legs are thicker than his arms because that's where a lot of our muscles usually we have bigger legs than our arms. So now I come in from the bottom here. Okay. All right, so gecko toes now. So I want to do the same thing. I want to angle way out. And then I want to put three V's in here. I removed my tray, so I have all my light colors on this side. Okay. Good organization, Caden. And then I do the circles on the end of the toes, so he's got his little spread out gecko toes. This will be my yellow for my green, and this will be my green. Okay. All right, so now the other leg. So I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to go up towards the top of my paper, and then I'm going to angle down towards the, kind of towards the bottom corner. And then I'm going to make the bottom line come up. Probably could be a little bit thicker than that. Up here. All right, then I do the toes. So I have both sides of his legs here. And then I'm going to come out, angle out on each one. 
I'm going to do the V's in there. And then I'm going to close in the circles for the sticky toes. All right. So my gecko's in the desert, and he's on a rock. So I'm going to make just the shape of this rock around him. So there's his rock that he's on, but I want to do kind of a cool desert looking background. So before I do, because I'm using a Sharpie, so before I do like the horizon line, which is where the sky meets the ground, um, I want to do some cactus first. And I'm doing them smaller because they're going to be a long ways away. So I'm not doing them really close, so I'm going to do them farther up towards the top of my paper. And they're just, I'm just doing three cactus things. I don't know a whole lot about cactus, but I just do a little arm at different lengths and sizes coming out on each side of this. So just make them different sizes. Let's do, I'm going to do a, a different kind of cactus. I don't know. Like I said, this is not a place that I've lived. So I'm just making connecting circles and then I'll use little lines to make the little cactus prickles on this. You could do it on your big cactus too. You could put them on here if you wanted. Or, I know they also have the grooves in them, I guess. So just whatever you like for that. Okay, so the reason I did those first is I want to make my, so now I'm going to make, this is where the desert, the sand, and the sky meet. So I'm going to put a line all the way across behind my cactus, but I'm going to stop here. I'll almost go a little bit further. And then I just want some, um, what are these called, Caden? The plateaus, where the rocks come way up. Are they plateaus? Is that what they are? Mm -hmm. Growing, so that's way off in the distance. All right, so there's my, my gecko and the environment that he lives in. Oh, look at yours. Yours looks so good, Kate. And look at his colors, his painting. Where are you going to use green for our geckos? Green for our cactus. So do you guys remember what colors make green? If you already have green in your paint, um, you don't have to mix them. But it is fun to even mix some of your greens with other colors. So colors that make green are yellow and blue. And so I'm going to make sure you guys can see this. So I get my paint really wet first. Really loosens up my painting, my paint here. Gets it nice and thick. Okay, so there's my yellow. I'm going to just go ahead and paint some yellow on my gecko because, and I'm doing it pretty wet because I'm going to just add the green into it. Or the blue on it, sorry. Now I want to get some of this and I'm going to make my gecko bright green because I guess he doesn't have to hide from anybody right now. He's feeling pretty confident that there's no look at yours Kaden I should have used a smaller brush because I'm totally getting out of the lines but that's all right so see how my gecko turned green and I just used the yellow and the turquoise color I'm going to 
use a smaller brush. Good job. See, Caden, are you going to add some background? Look at this polka dotted oh, no, gecko. I think I'm in my cupid well, you could put it on a rock or something. If you wanted to. Yeah. So right now I'm just painting with water. There's my turquoise. yellow right on top of it and it turns it green. Now if I wanted to make it just a little darker green I'm going to take a little bit of my blue violet I'm staying in the lines today. But who says we have to always stay in the lines? The, the only thing is when you're painting with watercolor and you're painting color around it, if your colors meet, they'll all mix up together. They'll just kind of seep into each other's spots. So that is the reason why sometimes we want to stay in the lines. Are you done, Kaden? Yeah, I think I am. All right, well, there was Kaden. He gets things done in a hurry. We got all of our flowers in the garden today because we're supposed to get a bunch of rain. But right now the sun's out, there's blue sky, so I don't know. They really needed water, and I was thinking, well, we'll get them in there, and we'll let the rain do its job. But we'll see. So I'm taking some more blue-violet in the areas I wanted a little darker. It makes a darker green. So glad it's warmer out. It's just been, this is my blue violet and right now it looks kind of black. I think when I add my other color in here, it's going to change it. I just like playing with different colors that you can make. Experimenting and seeing what, what they look like different colors mixed with new colors. Don't be afraid of it. If you make a mess and it all turns to mud, that's okay. You just know, well, next time maybe that isn't the way that I want to mix those colors. So don't be afraid of making mistakes, for sure. Best way to learn is just trying things out. That's how I've taught myself to do art and painting. Just doing it, not being afraid of mistakes. lawnmower open window weather that makes me think of nap time. Must have been so ingrained into my mind when I was a little girl. I lay in my bed in the middle of the afternoon with the windows open and 
hearing somebody mow. Or maybe when my kids were little, I used to make my kids take naps. So I have, I have eight kids. Seven are my bi biological children. Um, so when I had my first three, they were all 16 or 17 months apart. So I used to make them take naps till they were like five. It was probably the only way I'd get a break. So I'm sure that part of this lawnmower sound is probably from that time in my life too. They all, my all of my kids but one daughter um, made it for Mother's Day this year because my kids are older other than Caden. He's the baby. But it was fun. He's Caden is real into wanting to hear stories of like his brothers and sisters when they were young. I think he feels a little left out like he would have loved to be in the Mets when they were all little. So he was asking for their stories when they were. My, my oldest three kids are 32, 30, 31, and 29, the oldest three. They used to take naps all the time, but it was fun. Now I think I can hear the stories without being traumatized by the things that they used to do that I didn't know about. Now I can laugh about them. They wouldn't dare tell those stories when they were young. But anyways, crazy stories, things they did that I sure didn't know about. But I'm so blessed to have them. They all live close as of now. All right, I'm gonna let that guy dry. And I'm gonna come up to my sky before I do my cactus. All right, so I want it to be, it, whoops, I don't want green on my sky. I'm gonna take that off. See how I just lifted it off before it soaked in? Clean my brush out good. I want it to be, um, and I'm getting my paper wet. I want it to be like a, a sunset in the desert. And, and I think of it being hot and the sun is really scorching hot. So I'm gonna take just my orange, my red orange, and I'm just gonna drop it in here. yellow now. Got some of this yellow to go in with my orange. So now my sky is like on fire. Not literal, literally, but just the sunset. Okay, so I'm going to come over. I got to turn this around because my arm's going to swoop right across my gecko. So now I still have a little bit of paint in my brush, which is okay. But you can see I'm just getting this really watery so that my paint will just do its cool thing, its fun thing that it does on its own. And I try not to get my water up against, so like if I want to paint these cactus, I try not to let the water touch because I don't want my green cactus to blend into this. So I'm trying to stay away from that a little bit. If I had my little brush, I could push that paint down in there, but that's all right. All right, so there's my desert sky. Let's make the mountain or the little plateau thing. I'm gonna do it like a hot pink. 
the shadows can take on different colors here. It is gecko day, Dad. to be a little darker so now I'm going to do some of my blue violet in here so it's supposed to be kind of shadowed because it's away from the Sun the Sun's farthest away I'll turn this around make more sense the Sun is farthest away so it this side of everything would be away from the Sun so it'd be more on the shadowed side since the sun would be behind all of this. All right, before, so let's see. We'll keep the desert ground stay in this purpley color. I remember we went on a vacation. See how that those balloons go in there? I love that. Um, when, when I was little, we went on a vacation to Arizona, New Mexico, and Colorado and stuff. We went to a place, the Painted Desert, which I think was probably close to a Grand Canyon. I don't know if it was New Mexico or Arizona. But just all the colors in the desert, I would appreciate it so much more. I think I was 12. I came to age when we went. So I'd love to go again. As an artist, as a painter, and just be able to see all the colors that just from all the different and the way the sun would shine on different things. I'm put some orange up on the top because that sunset's reflecting on the sand. We're just pushing some of that color up in here. Anywhere you want darker, you can, as it dries, you can add more layers. Don't try to get too wet of paper. But if you want darker places, just um, add it more as it dries. All right, I'm gonna go with a little brush. I'm gonna see if I can get my little um, cactus here painted without getting over into the sunset. So I'm just doing my turquoise blue first. And I'm going to add yellow on top of that and it'll change it to green. Cleaning my brush out in between so I don't get my paint colors too mixed together. See how that turned green now? Since I have green on my brush, I can go ahead and paint this little guy here. Started this one with yellow, so it doesn't really matter which color you do first, because they're just all going to together. So there's my cactus. So now all I have is my rock in front of that's up close. So he's up close. So I'm trying to think what color that rock could look. A rock would be gray maybe, but we don't want to just do what our mind tells us. We want to see color in places that sometimes we don't always see it. So like when you kids are riding in the car right now or looking out the window, if you look out at the green right now, 
you don't just see green. You don't just see one green. You see hundreds of different shades of green, maybe thousands, who knows? So, um, and sometimes I'm trying to think in the fall, there would be like fills that would take on a, maybe a purple hue to them, even though they weren't really maybe purple, but just, it's just cool how you can start seeing colors and things that are just maybe black and white and gray. I'm trying to think what color. I want this purple in here because it kind of looks like it could be gray. But I feel like I want some other color in with it. So we'll see. I'm going to just start with the purple everywhere. Just doing a light wash here. Okay, thank you, Kim. I have purple already here, and so it's just kind of spreading. These are always really neat when they dry. They don't ever look exactly how you leave them. When I come back and see my picture afterwards, it's like, oh, that's kind of cool how different colors dry different ways and the different blends of colors. See, I feel like above that cactus, I need a little bit more color. That was a little light. That needs to stay with the dark look up there. So I do need to add some color up there. There's a little piece of watercolor that broke off on my brush. All right, so this is trying to get in between his toes here. Get in here. Southwesterny look. All right, so I put darker all around that little cactus up there. I still like how the colors still start bleeding, and you can see where the green kind of went in, but it still looks cool. All right, so let's do one more thing. I think around my lizard, I do want. Let's see if I can get it really dark. I would like it to look like it's a shadow. And it'll make him look like he's on a rock. So I'm just going around some of him. Like on the bottom side, the sides that are closest to me from the angle that I'm looking at him from. I'm putting dark colors. And it makes a shadow and it kind of, what I would call anchors him or makes him look like he's actually sitting on this rock, putting it around his toes a little bit, like all the bottom half of him. And I'm just using my blue violet. I don't have to use, I know sometimes in our minds we think shadows need to be gray or black, but they don't have to be. He's 
So I, I made the part that's further. So my son's up here, way back here, okay? And I went down behind, it's already set behind the ground. And so the sunlight, what's left of the light, casts across here. And so the far side of my gecko is where the shadows would be. And really, those would be really long shadows because of the sun being so far down. So you could really bring your shadow part out far if you wanted to. So like when you look at your shadow on a sidewalk or a driveway and stuff and how you, your shadows are really long when the sun's setting. But when the sun's above you, like right now, your shadow would be right below you. right below you because sun's right overhead so all right what do you think that was fun do you guys like this one Gus and Oakley did you like doing this one you guys have um have your friends mom put your picture on so I can see it when you're done I want to see what awesome paintings you guys came up with um, and I hope you get to do it again. Anyways, let me go around his toes just a little bit more. Softening this shadow line out so it's not... I could bring my paint right up against my gecko a little bit better. Anyways, well, I'm glad you all joined us today. Tomorrow is umbrellas. Um, so I'll probably come up with something fun to do with that to kind of give it a, just not just an umbrella. So it'll just kind of give it a good, you know, just something we can add to it. So tomorrow's umbrellas. Next week is looking kind of questionable what days I'll be able to paint with you guys. I'm pretty sure Monday we can paint. Um, so Monday will be okay. Tuesday, I'm wanting to go up. My daughter's in Nebraska since her birthday was this week on Wednesday. Um, I would like to go up and maybe just hang out with her for a little bit on her birthday. Or, well, it's not her birthday. It'll be after. But anyways, I told her I'd come up and maybe help her plant some flowers in her yard or just do something like that. Just because she didn't get to come down and she spent yesterday... Yesterday's her birthday. What am I talking about? I don't know. I lost my train of thought. But anyways, so I want to go up next Tuesday. It was the only day I really had free because I have to be back for my heart club paintings for Wednesday night. So I didn't want to have to stay the night, but she, I think she has to work. Depends what her schedule is. So it looks like Tuesday and Wednesday may not work for next week. And then Thursday is when I go back to my assisted living and paint with them. So my, next week might just be Monday and Friday. And then again, I would love to hear what you, your thoughts are on for summertime, what you guys would enjoy having um, as far as how often or if we've done enough. I'm going to put a shadow under my cactus. they would have shadows too. I'm going to do a bigger brush. Sorry, I sit here and I could paint forever. Putting shadows under here. Long shadows. We talked about our long shadows. I sort of mimic what the thing is, but not really. And if I don't really want to mimic it, I just kind of blend it in a little bit. I don't want it to be that detailed. I just want to get the appearance of a shadow. And that's why I went dark over here. All right, so there's our gecko, you guys. That was fun. Anyways, um, I will be here tomorrow. We're going to do some umbrellas um, or a umbrella or something. Probably get some water texture, some rain texture, just to let the watercolors do their thing with us for tomorrow. So anyways, thank you for hanging out. This was fun. Um, I so enjoy this, so I will see you guys tomorrow. Enjoy your afternoon while we don't have rain. Um, 
in this warmer weather frame, we get to open the windows. So anyways, you guys have a great day and we will see you tomorrow.